Oh, and we are live and we have sound, I think. Do we have sound? Gordon, can you say something? Hi. <laughs> Perfect. I think we do have sound. Uh, welcome to the Raw Fury Twitch channel. My name is Angelica and I am a, an uh, experienced producer working on Kingdom Two Crowns together with the lovely Gordon Van Dyke, who is with me today. Hey, yeah. Uh, how's it I going? I love doing streams with you because then the way you like introduce me or you speak to me is so much nicer. Well... <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, yeah you called me. You called me lovely. I don't know if you've ever called me lovely <laughs> in, in other <laughs> situations. So hand over to you in the, in the morning stand up to the lovely exactly. Gordon Van Dyke right. every morning. It's Gordon. <laughs> Gordon, are you here, Gordon? Gordon, say something. <laughs> yeah, you do have um, a tendency of being a time optimist. Uh, uh, as do I. So I'm not like throwing rocks in glass houses. Is that is that how you say it in English? That's uh, yeah. Well, Swedish. don't don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. Exactly. Okay. So me accusing you of being a time optimist is me throwing stones living in a glass house. So <laughs> <laughs> don't throw darts in rubber boats. That's a very good one as well. It's very modern. You shouldn't be using a rubber boat. You should be environmentally friendly. Glass is recyclable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're here for our monthly Kingdom stream. And um, we do have a couple of streams behind us already. So we are going to... I'm going to switch over to the gameplay screen. We're going to continue playing on uh, a campaign that we've started a few months ago actually before christmas um so we're in the middle of a deadlands campaign and um we're on the third island as you guys can see uh, yeah, we haven't and, done... and you lost the dog you lost a dog man i did no such <laughs> thing i never I don't, dog. I, I don't know it has no proof let's look it says in here yes it's your game your ruler you lost okay. the the dog is always lost, <laughs> says Balawi28. Yeah, I feel like that. I mean, I, the dog is precious. You need to take care of the dog. Well, um, so what we can see from the map, we have not gone back to the first island to pick up the awesome Gamigin Steed. We haven't activated the statue there either. So we do have some stuff to go back and do on the first island if we want to. Or we can just push on because um, we're in the third island now. Looks like we have stuff to do here as well. So. Oh yeah, okay, are we ready to go? We are, right? So I'm on the top part of the screen playing as Miriam on one of my favorite steeds, the barrier steed or golem steed. Um, and Gordon is down below, he's Jeebo. Um, the fan favorite, the stag. You know, his antlers kind of slightly glow. Yeah. So when you go into the forest, you can see the antlers. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember what we were doing, like how much we had progress, but it's looking pretty good, right? Uh, zero clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy a bow. That's never wrong, right? I just remember that you lost the dog and we were all super disappointed. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to save the dog, but I'm not sure like what island we lost the dog on. So we just we're gonna have to go back and. I think I lost him really. I mean, yeah. you lost him <laughs> super early. That's bullshit. That's such bullshit. <laughs> okay. This is why we have the maturity filter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were like, before we started streaming, you are like, this stream is like R-rated, why? <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> It'll show. Um, but yeah, so this is Kingdom Two Crowns, and I mean, if you've seen any of our early streams, you know what we're doing. Uh, but if you're just a Raw Fury fan who haven't and just tuned into this channel, Gordon, how would you describe what are we playing? 
your game, obviously, but <laughs> <laughs> like how would I'd you like describe, describe it to to Kingdom in general, or how if yeah. someone's a, already a fan of Kingdom? No, like how if, would if I just... you've never heard of Kingdom before, like how would you describe? Oh the game? boy, I mean, that, this has always been something that's actually been a challenge for for us. Um, so it's kind of fun that you bring it up. It's one of the things that we always have struggled with, and this happened when we first started trying to show the Kingdom games, uh, was that uh, we couldn't, we didn't know how to describe it, because it's not a specific genre, but I would say it's a, a combination of several genres. Um, so you have a bit of tower defense, uh, you have a bit of base building, you know, yeah, and it's a this it's like a two two D. Uh oh, I got disconnected. <gasps> you did, man. Mm -hmm. From uh, let's see here. Okay, so <clears throat> the way we're playing right now is not like the normal multiplayer. We're playing um, via something called Steam Remote, which makes the yeah. game act like we are sitting at the same computer. So that you guys would get both the, my screen and Gordon's screen. So that's why we're, we've chosen this way to play it. I'm going to send you a new invite, Gordon, see if that works. Are you back? I hear something, but I, the screen hasn't taken over yet. Um, there we go. Yeah, now I'm back. back. Yeah, okay. Uh, it works most of the time. <laughs> it's a it's the same functionality <laughs> that's really cool because you, you can act like it's a local co-op session. Um, so that's what you're seeing right now. Oh wait, I'm gonna have to switch back. There we go. Wait, wait. Uh oh. Yeah. Was that you this time? Yeah. Okay, so we're going back to just trying to describe yes. Kingdom Two Crowns. Um, so it's a yeah, it's a game where you're a ruler, and really your goal is. And, and this is to defeat the greed uh, from the lands. So uh, you're basically trying to expand your kingdom. You're trying to uh, build out the kingdoms. And you, you're a ruler with several kingdoms. So each land, we consider each location a kingdom. Uh, so, yeah. So you're just trying to, to build, that, build that kingdom. And... Uh, well, I'm doing a horrible job of describing the game, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're trying to build the kingdom and you're trying to, uh, yeah, make progress and, and eradicate the greed from all five of your kingdoms. So that's, that's the gist of it. Yep. So um, it's sort of a, a minimalistic micro strategy, tower defense yeah. -y retro style yeah i i would say that there's it's there's a lot more strategic elements to it than people realize and i think they they underestimate uh just how many how many interesting scenarios happen based on what you your choices that you make uh, so there's a, I, we always try to kind of think about it in the same sense of chess right the best players are the ones who can think the most moves ahead. And that's what we've tried to do with Kingdom, is have it to where the most, the players that are going to do the best in Kingdom and Kingdom Two Grounds are the ones that are, are thinking very far ahead. Um, and we also, in Kingdom, have two game modes uh, and two crowns. Uh, so the original games were... Uh, a single game mode, which was a roguelike. Uh, and now what we've done is we've updated Kingdom uh, Two Crowns, so it has a campaign mode. So it, it removed the... Uh, it removed that uh, roguelike element, and so you would kind of start as a the heir to your the kingdom, and you would be able to... Uh, you'd be able to kind of take over, but there would be some damage to the kingdom. Uh, so you would have to repair and kind of take back over where that previous ruler had lost the crown and kind of reacquire some of the stuff. But it was, it was more of a way that players who weren't 
who are not super into roguelike style games, uh, they would, when they lost their crown, they would still have something left that they had accomplished. And more or less, they, they would just have to repair and kind of rebuild that scenario. Uh, and that was why we did it that way. Uh, but it's still like, the, I think the downside is in that campaign mode is that a lot of people, I don't know if it's just uh, existing players who like are very knowledgeable about Kingdom, but it seems like it's a lot of players struggle with knowing uh, whether they're uh, on their kingdom, whether it was like they feel like they lost. And that was the thing I wish I would have done better uh, was, yeah, just communicating to the player like, no, you haven't lost. You just... You, you just have to, you know, you just, you lost your crown and then you have, just have to repair what you did before. You just have to rebuild what you lost. Yeah. Uh, and you didn't lose everything. But then people still really like roguelike and there's there was still something to it. So we added Challenge Islands. And the Challenge Islands brought back that, uh, brought back that feeling, that roguelike element and gave us the ability also to, to do things in a more themed way so we could experiment more. So I would consider like uh, the campaign as being the, the new de facto kingdom experience and the challenge islands are more experimental experiences for the player. But those so. also do require a lot of strategic thinking and, and a little bit more trial and error even to figure out how to actually achieve those goals because the goals are very different in each challenge and there are funny quirks um, that makes each challenge island something different. Yeah. <clears throat> but maybe yeah, that's exactly. something for it's a, like we a have the plague stream. one. Yeah, we have the plague one. We have... Uh, uh, you know, Skull Island. Uh, we have uh, the Dire Wolf one, where you can you know lose the dog and you lose the crown. Which so I would have lost the game for us. <laughs> um, yes. uh, but the big difference also is we 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 all, you know, those are single player only. Yeah, we do, we just have had a comment in the chat from below with twenty eight uh, regarding that. It says just consider making them co op. Consider. Uh, yeah. That doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. It's considered. <laughs> that is all I will say. It must be I'm hard sealed. being <laughs> like the person who somehow sets the direction for a whole game. Like, where do we take this next? How do we continue to work on this and evolve this game? And how can we keep building on it? It's got to be really hard making those choices because when you choose something you choose to not do something else mm. yeah. yeah it's it i don't know it's yeah exactly it's kind of uh it's kind of a double-edged sword right it's like you it's awesome to be able to to have a role where i kind of lead that direction of things and i get to be very involved in and in how we're how we're doing things and where we're going in the direction. But yeah, those hard choices come in, uh, in, uh, in a, into play. And I feel like though, I feel like our team is very supportive of each other. And I feel like we, we look at things together often. It's like, yeah, ultimately, you know, someone has to be the one who makes that final call, but it's like, we discuss things and we look at it sometimes very pragmatic it's like how hard is it to put this feature in is this feature possible sometimes things just we can't do it and it's not for a lack of want to do it but it's more okay this feature just you know the way the game is set up it just can't handle it yeah. uh, it's 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 unfortunate but that's just the case sometimes it's funny how something that you you might think like, yeah, that should be super easy to add. Um, but yeah. it's, it turns out to be quite the mess to get something implemented. Um, I'm by no yeah. means a, a programmer or a coder, but I, I've been in a lot of discussion with our developers and, and they're like, yeah, no, we can't do that. That's, that's almost impossible. 
And, and yeah. you can have this kind of crazy idea that you're like, oh, but there's no way we're going to have time to do that. And then it's like, yeah, well, we can probably do it like this. And if we do it this way, it should work like this. Um, so there is a lot of magic that goes goes on behind the scenes, I would say, when it comes to how the game is, is made. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's a fun thing, but then it's also something that can... Uh, at times be very frustrating because you have this concept or this idea in your head and when you can't do it it's very like you get kind of let down <laughs> uh, and you're like no but I really want I mean there's I can't re I think of how many ideas that I've had I mean there's like there's there, I think I'm not saying I, I there's still stuff that surprises me but we've thought of a lot of stuff there is a huge scratch pad of uh, ideas and uh, things that we've thought about doing uh, that we haven't been able to do yet uh, that we would love to try and accomplish so yeah uh, and I can imagine like everybody who works in the game industry probably has an idea for a game uh, either a, a, like a brand new game or, or like how to build on an existing game so it's like coming up with the idea ideas is it's very seldom like the tricky part because there are so yeah. many amazing and wonderful ideas. The hard thing is to actually make a game out of those ideas and not only like create a prototype and, and try to make it work, but actually finishing that game as well. Like deciding yeah. when you're done, um, like putting up those boundaries, like, okay, this is the game. Because uh, as a game developers, I, I think you can just keep going and building and putting things in there and polishing and making it a little bit better like when when are you done how do you know that the game is complete well you probably run out of cash or have a deadline to make, <laughs> but you know exactly um game development is hard yeah. <laughs> true yeah. very true yeah like I, I feel like personally i could just keep going it's like and sometimes i wish i could i just and I think that's why I've stuck with Kingdom for so long. And it's like, I've been working on this this game, uh, not 100% all the time, but I've been working on this game uh, uh, and then all the previous Kingdom games. So it's been six years of just working on Kingdom. Uh, so, yeah. So I've been I've been sticking it out quite <laughs> for quite, quite some time. But that's like the luxury of having a game that is timeless in the way i would say the kingdom is because people are still discovering it and people are still falling in love with it and we are still you know sorry sorry to get all boring and you know economy here but it, people are still buying it and that allows us to keep building yeah. on it and we we're not even charging for new content and and like deadlines that was a free dlc that everybody who ever bought the game would just get for free so it's it's really awesome to have a game that just keeps on living like that and that allows us to keep working on it so yeah i really cool. raw fury could have definitely taken a more um you know monetary position that would have benefited them better and i think that you know people need to see the things that raw fury has done that other publishers wouldn't do Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's a lot to be said for that, and you know, and maybe I'm a bit biased because if those that don't know, before I moved over to my studio, 100%, I was the co. I, well, I guess I still am co-founder of Raw Fury, uh, with, and it was just Jonas, the uh, the founder, and I for a while. It was just the two of us, <laughs> and there was nobody else. And I started helping the devs with Kingdom, and that's how I got wrapped into this. Uh, working on it and I w was in dev before this so that's also uh, I think an important point uh, as well so it's like yeah the fact that we they keep supporting it and you know giving away DLC for free and doing those things it's like there are really publishers out there that are doing that uh, you know when we set out with that kind of um, that philosophy and that that idea the reason that we did that was because we figured you know what there's a lot more people that don't own it than do own it mm -hmm. and so we rather reward people who have been uh you know uh you know like oh no what's going on this lag it, now the lag is causing a lot of issues for me oh, uh, no. 
Steam remote play is not the best it's not when perfect. it comes to this. No. No. So it caused me to build a wall. <laughs> Uh, we have a question from the chat. Uh, Badger's Maker is asking, Gordon, any plans to change where farmers idle at night in winter? They walk all the way back to the castle after yes. farming berries, unless you spam drop coins on them or set them yes. on fire with the lizard over and over. Wow. I love but, that you know what? Like, I'm loving you love these it, strategies, though. Now you're making me regret that we changed it. <laughs> You should never give me this like this elaborate way that you're solving <laughs> problems because I, I really prefer that. I prefer when players are solving the problems and the game just has the tools to solve them. And it's not the, the, the players, you know, like, yeah. It's not the developers just kind of curling for the, de the players. Yeah, but there, uh, there's, there's something in the plans to make that a little bit more smooth right i can say i can I, I feel like it's safe to confirm several things because we want everyone to be clear we are actively working on kingdom two grounds um so you know just yeah to be very upfront with you guys we absolutely are working on um working on the game and we fixed the night and we've done an update to winter so not just the farmers but fix the berry bushes, uh, and we've we're going to introduce critters uh, into winter, uh, but at a reduced rate. So instead of just getting rid of them completely, we're just reducing them. And the reason that we had these set up this way at, at all to begin with was because this was the design from the previous Kingdom games. But those were roguelike games, and winter never ended. And so I thought. You know, this was my my ignorance, but I thought, oh, we solved we solved that issue because now it winter isn't forever. But I, I was wrong. There was more elements to winter that weren't fun, and and kind of we created a new dilemma because then players had to just suffer through it, which is kind of what winter was back then. <laughs> but at the same time, do players really want that? And that's a, a different discussion. You know, does that make players happy? Does, that, do they enjoy that? I really could have used, I needed your whip. Where's your whip? Yeah, no. I, just, I was just about to ask, like, are you doing okay over the, that edge? Um, no. But you got a floater as well. Oh, my God. Yeah. We got a, a guest appearance oh, in the... Oh, and the ninjas. The ninjas are being, we got a, uh, oh, an update. Ninjas. Okay. Yeah, so the yes. ninjas, as we say, the ninjas went to... Um, uh, sensei uh, Kurt's dojo, and they've been retrained because they were. We realized they were yellow belts, so we've retrained them, and now they've spent tons of times in training, and they are they are now black belt ninjas. They've been wax off, wax on for a couple of weeks yeah. now, so hopefully exactly. ninjas are gonna be smooth in the next patch. Um, yeah. I was just gonna say we have a, a small guest appearance in the chat. Shedworks Greg says hi and hey. says Gordon looking very handsome. Oh, well, thank you. So Shedworks Greg, that is the design director uh, working on Sable, which is another Raw Fury game that I'm also involved in. So yeah, Greg is awesome. I yes. miss you, Greg. Aww. I hope I can see you sometime in the not so distant future. Yes. You know, I'm old, you know, I'm old, Greg, so I get my vaccines earlier than others. Cantos <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 57. I, I hope to go, come out to the, uh, uh, London and see you. Miss you too, Gordon, he says. You look younger now than we met, though. What is that? Yeah, I grew my hair out. So I think that that's the, the, the secret. I grew my hair out and... Um, yeah, and I've been learning to cook myself, <laughs> so maybe that's helped me. Less, uh, less food that isn't good for me. Should we go on to the next island? I think we need to to get iron, right? <clears throat> uh, I hope his Swedish has improved, though. Har den det, Gordon? Är du bättre på svenska nu? Nej. 
Nay, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Your plot defense gets into some rock. <laughs> yeah, but you, you still understand if we try to trash talk you, so. How about uh, you learn the curse words first? Exactly. <laughs> um, I, w I was going to read a comment from Cantos57. Um, any plans or intentions to change how the merchant or hamlets get destroyed once you expand too far? Sometimes you can accidentally expand one or two ticks too far and lose your population or big incomes. Any thoughts on rebuilding or paying to absorb those into the kingdom? Yeah, I, I've we put some thought into that, and that's a that's that's a really tricky uh, design dilemma that we we're we're under. Uh, so. I'm still we're we're putting some thought into that, but uh, yeah, I mean the merchant he's, but the merchant's more of a handicap, so it's more of a okay you're in the beginning of this you don't really understand farms you don't understand you know building these open spaces so that tall grass grows so that you're getting more uh, critters to spawn and you know oh. you haven't mastered oh. those things so here's something oh. to help you ease you through this. Oh, you want to go on the boat? Yes, let's go. Yeah. Oh, wait, we have to ring the bell. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I interrupted you. Um, but the weird thing is I'm getting the wall, which has yeah. also been fixed. Mm -hmm. That won't happen anymore. That's good. But yeah, wall it's the merchant, it's, yeah, it's supposed to be available like early on the first the fir it's of islands. Yeah, land one and two. Yeah. Hmm. So that one makes sense, but yeah, I mean, that's, it's a pretty big, do we have everyone with us? We do, I think. Let's go. Um, like for the, the camps where you recruit new citizens, that's, yeah, that's tricky because it's a lot of strategy. Like, do you oh. sacrifice a camp to be able to expand? Um, so I do think like, yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying that you have to sometimes get rid of them to be able to expand, but that's yeah. also a strategic choice you have to make. Like, when do you do that? <clears throat> so can I, can I share in a, a quite elaborate design idea that I had for that? Sure. Uh, I think okay. the chat will so get to hear. Just, just so the chat remembers, this is purely conceptual. There's, it, it hasn't even been put into any kind of task to be implemented. So don't don't get your hopes up <laughs> so my my this idea that i had was that you have a brief moment if you cut that down you have a brief moment after the tree has fallen before the camp disappears right there's there's a small window uh for before that uh falls down so what i wanted to do was have it to where you could buy that camp and that camp would turn into kind of like a house and you could actually pay, and then two citizens would go out in there, a little heart would appear, and then you would have a child citizen that you would have to like protect and and make sure that that wall didn't fall and that agree didn't bump the child. It wouldn't hurt the child, but so it would just knock the, a coin. Kind of a little sex cottage. <laughs> Like no, this, but no, no. You, this you is this is this is love. Into it this is love. Babies. There's a heart. It's love. Not if you're this paying is, them. This is this is <laughs> this is romance. How anything works. Fornication wow. under consent of the king. Okay. Wow. <laughs> we we we're gonna have a talk about this later, Gordon. This is so not okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Not in the game. But, Not a confirmed. So, so uh, then, <laughs> then you have this like, yeah. So then the kid has to grow. So you still have um, a resource to to increase your citizens, but it's a bit slower pace. So it's not as fast because the main thing to do that is to remove a soft locked game scenario, where the player kind of gets locked. Not because, uh, not not because they're losing but because yeah there's just this thing in the way yeah Ugh, so. i'm trying to bring all the gems home but they keep falling out of my bag oh, i think i got them all Did I? I forgot about something that i think we added can you hold down on the on the down key and then drop a gem if you hold down Oh, I know. I, I accidentally <laughs> built the wall instead. <laughs> Trickery. Uh, 
uh, no. Somebody that thought is, you no. could do that, and I was like, I don't ever remember us putting that in, but no. it's genius if we did. <laughs> uh, I, now you need to drop all those coins um, and get to where you drop the, the gems out. I didn't my deer was gems. looking at my 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 deer broke the third wall or my stag or the fourth <laughs> wall. He was like looking at us like, did she just do that? Yeah. Even the even the stag is judging you, Angelica, at Thanks. this point. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I'm thinking like if if there is an option to drop gems on mobile, maybe, but I don't think so. Like you drop the gems. Like why would you ever want to drop a gem? Like if you if you're gonna use the coins or gems to bribe the grieved to not take your crown, you're gonna want to use your coins first anyway. Oh my god, we don't have any walls, yeah. Gordon. What's going on? Noob mistake. I have a wall. <laughs> There's uh, lots of wishes in the chat for uh, Challenge Islands being available in co-op. I like to see that. <clears throat> you know, if we did that, though, to me, it has to be done right. And, and so there's some tricky things why we, we didn't put that in there. Uh, one, we weren't sure how popular co-op our co-op was going to be. We don't take data. Uh, so we don't know <laughs> what people are playing the most. And and it was tricky because there are some design challenges um, that happen when you want to put co-op into challenge islands. Uh, so one of the, 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 the dilemmas is, well, if this is a challenge, then it needs to be, um, it, you can't go between single player and, and, and um, and co-op like you can hop in hop out so we we have to change how that system was working um there are some other like ux issues with how we we do that so if we did it it would have to be its own separate thing uh and we just didn't have the time or the dev team size and and it's like yeah and also it has to have unique challenges unique challenges it can't be it can't be something that's yeah, that's just yeah. Oh, it's the same exact goals to get to the next crown. Yeah, so it's that, super that hard. Wouldn't be fair to all the people who no. actually managed to get. And it'd be boring. On single player, so yeah. Yeah, but this is how we approach everything. This is why it does take us maybe so longer time to do stuff than people would like, because we don't do it halfway. We don't just. Uh, take something and just shove it in there. Like if we're going to do it, we want to really try to incorporate it to uh, to the kind of experience that we're trying to achieve uh, in Kingdom Two Crowns. So uh, yeah, we never do it. We never do it halfway, even if it looks like that. <laughs> are you are you happy with the stag, or would you want a little lizard in your life? I have some gems. <laughs> Buying you the lizard. You didn't even this. wait Look for at me. This. To it's answer. one of my favorite uh, like appearance animations. It is so moist. I like so it. this originally, I wanted a dragon, and I ended up with the lizard. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> compromise. Here's an example of a compromise. What prevented the lizard from <laughs> from being a dragon? I don't know. It's like art. What is the, the kind of part of it? They weren't really sure how to 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 do that and to have it look good and and yeah. So it's like we ended up with something more salamandery, lizardish. Uh, well, I'm totally fine with that. I like. It. I think uh, they did an awesome job. So it's kind of fun. It's. Uh, yeah. I do uh, like to play with the lizard, um, at least before we did Deadlands and introduced the golem that I'm playing now. That's one of my favorites as well. Um, but before that, I, I always used to pick the lizard, actually. It's really good when it comes to defending and um, yeah. attacking the caves. But it's- You like, know what my, f yeah. my favorite thing about <clears throat> the, the lizard uh, is that, you know, he can't replenish his stamina at nighttime. Right, because he wants the sun. That was something, yeah. That was something I really wanted, and I was really happy that we were able to get that in. Because sadly, it is kind of difficult 
and some of the um, and some of the uh, like how to get the seeds to work. Like the griffin originally wasn't supposed to be able to eat on bridges, um, and you know only uh, you know. And but it was really difficult to kind of set those spaces up and get it to recognize that. So it was like eat everywhere. So I actually went in and changed all the pixel art to make the little, it looked like it was picking up a rodent or something fleshy, meaty. And then I changed it to look more like it was greed bits so did that it looks like it's eating. Did you do that in a patch or did you do that yeah, from the beginning? Yeah, in a patch. Because I remember actually at one, play, one player complaining about like the rats are purple. <laughs> Please fix this bug. <laughs> um, but it's um, no, it's, it's intentional. intentional. Then mm -hmm. it's weird how often some some I'm like, is this a bug? I'm like, nope, that's intentional. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. It's yeah, I spent a lot of time. Maybe people don't understand. That's about <laughs> twenty or thirty animations where I had to go through and change each pixel to the correct color. <laughs> of the greek so but it's like it was to explain because you can eat in the cave you can eat on the bridge you can eat everywhere so to me and my my crazy brain it made more sense that you're eating bits of greed that had dropped as they were traversing or maybe being defeated however you wanted to kind of tell that story in in your head and to me that made more sense but that's like the really interesting part about working with pixel art is like you can leave so much up to the players to interpret because um, there's like there's so much room to read into between the pixels and that's really cool. I also say something that we've been working on that I wanted to do. So this is something that I set out and did uh, or pushed for was I wanted to improve the parallax layer. So in a future update, whenever that happens, one thing I can confirm is that you guys will see an upgrade to the parallaxing. So the forest will feel a bit deeper. And I've also gone through and done a big pass on all the blender states. So the, the, uh, the colors and the sky and the environment uh, will have a bit of a, an update to it. And I think it looks really good. Of course, I'm biased, uh, so you'll just have to trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, but yeah, uh, so we're we're always yeah. working on it. We're always trying to improve, right? We we learn stuff, we get better. We're you know we we're going to upgrade uh, the Unity version, so that impacts things and that affects what things that we can do uh, and what things we can kind of accomplish uh, within the game. So there's you know because Unity is always up. Grading, it also allows us to continuously upgrade the game. And I hope people like that. Um, and they they enjoy the fact that you know, we are trying to always improve this game. Uh, and we're, we're not justifying it with microtransactions. <laughs> Look at our pro strats here. Yeah. Wow. And we didn't even we didn't even say anything to each other. We just boom. Right. Why won't he catch on fire, though? There we go. Yes, but he's not... Oh, you need... Does your eyes put it out? Are we that cool? <laughs> Are we that dope that we did that? I actually think... Let's see. What? Okay. <laughs> but okay, I'll let you kill him then. Set him on fire. Yes! Wait, wait. Yeah. Oh my god. The guys is... over at Fury Studios are so awesome. I know that they did that because I know they were working on this. Uh, so Merco, he's like over two meters tall. <laughs> uh, he's one of the programmers over there. I love that guy. I actually interviewed him. Uh, Jonas and I interviewed him uh, when we were setting up Fury Studios. So. so it's a bit of an interesting setup now that you mention it, the way we work on Kingdom, because we have Stumpy Squid, which is your studio, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that has one programmer and uh, one designer. And then we have a studio in Croatia, which has three programmers. What? There's three of us. But you made, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we're too design focused. Yes. Uh, and I would say Alan is more of a, well, he's more of a 
I meant other a than you. Technical designer, because he can, but he can program. So he's better at programming. I'm good at copy pasting. I'm not so good at programming. Like if I if like I go into a script, I can understand what's going on, f- for the most part, unless it's really complex. Uh, and then I go in there and I I just I just add things to it. So maybe there's a another resource like. Yeah, like I added another layer for the parallaxing, so I just add that layer and 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 I move stuff around and blocks and stuff, and or I'll go into a in the, to a, a C sharp script and and add some new components, but not write the core code for those. I'm not that good, but Alan's been going around and doing stuff. So that Alan Kurtz is the designer, and that's why uh, Kurtz worked on the ninjas, and that's why they went to uh, Sensei Kurtz. <laughs> That's good. Oh, there is a lovely comment again from Balawi28. Uh, Kingdom inspired me to begin with pixel art. I made surprisingly amazing animals and their animations. That's such a joy to awesome. hear. That makes us very happy. Um, yes. It inspired me too. I had done some stuff. Like I had this, I used Mega Man as, uh, like, as the base. And then I, this is back in 2013. Wow. Uh, and I was making Vikings with Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> I was working on a Viking game at the time. That's what motivated that. Called War of the Vikings. Hmm. <clears throat> I was ahead. Of, I was ahead of the trend. <laughs> yes, I hear Vikings are all the rage now. Hmm. I was too soon. <laughs> yes, always ahead of the curve. So, um, how do you think it's going for us? We doing good? I think it's pretty good. Yeah. We barely talk about our strategies, which I guess is like, cause we both played the game so much. Like we kind of know what we're doing. Um, and we're talking about other stuff as well. So it's like uh, kind of an au- autopilot a little bit. Uh, mm. but it seems to be working out for us, right? So far, no yeah. losses, except that dog a couple of islands back, still grieving. Yeah, I'm, I was surprised you let that happen. We'll come back for you, Fido. <laughs> we'll come back. <laughs> <clears throat> Where is your catapult? <laughs> Bedsmaker thinks we're missing a catapult. Well, we need to upgrade this wall. Yes. Or at least That's build the wall is. here. Yeah, yeah. What's going on in your side? Oh, you got a portal really yes. close by. Yeah. Oh. So we should probably. So. so we can build a farm here if we take it out. Mm, okay. All right. Should I? Yes, let's do our pro strats. Take them over here. Oh, sorry. No, wait. Maybe not. <laughs> it only works if we're. <laughs> okay. So much for pro strats. I'm taking everything back. <laughs> No. Okay. Luckily, I was very rich and uh, could bribe them to leave us alone. <laughs> but yes, maybe we should take out that portal, actually. Are you setting the portal on fire? Does that make you feel better? Yes. <clears throat> okay. I'm angry. We, yeah, we need to expand to be able to launch an attack anyway. So here's a bug that we fixed as well, or something that we fixed. Uh, that was based on player feedback. Where, you know, when that portal is so close, sometimes it could be even closer. But we've kind of fixed that as well. So I went through and did a big pass on all at the blocks. So basically every unique area uh, is is a block in the scene. So basically, uh, it, it you know, this whole area is one block in the scene. And then it takes a bunch of these blocks and aligns them side by side. And it randomizes and just places them all. Um, but what happened is a lot of the assets, we didn't, the art and code were the ones helping set those things up. And back then I didn't have as much time to to work on Kingdom. And now that I have the studio and I'm dedicated 100% to, uh, to, to Kingdom, it's like, I went through and started looking at all those blocks and found so many things that we could improve. So in a, in a future update, I think what you guys are going to see is it's going to be a little more difficult, I would say, because the levels are a bit larger. 
But uh, there were times where some of the levels uh, didn't really have a lot of forest, or you would see the the dock where the where the boat is. You would go there, and it would the forest would disappear right away when you when you arrived. And so I wanted to fix all those things and add a bit more forest because I felt like we had lost some of the mystery uh, that you felt when you went into the forest. Because more or less all the things, all the unique areas were stacked against each other, and it was only if there was a section told to be forest within that is the reason we had forest. So I went through and made sure that there's lots of little sections of forest that the players travel through. Uh, so I think people are going to be quite happy with it, but it will be a little harder, and speed runs will be more difficult. But I think it's especially noticeable in, in Deadlands, where we added a lot of new stuff. Uh, we have like the new rulers that you can rescue and change to. Um, and also, the buildings are a little bit wider as well, because we got so excited about making new cool pixel art that everything just became bigger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think Badger Smacker, uh, I love these names, <laughs> but Badger Smacker uh, asked if the blocks being updated will improve uh, catapult shot placement. Uh, and I would say it's going to improve placement of everything. Uh, because now there's more forest and spaces, and so wall placement is better. Uh, so there's going to be more opportunity to have those spaces where there's not objects that would block a shop from spawning. Uh, so we've, we're, you're not going to have those, uh, those overlaps as much. And that was a big reason for updating this as well. It's like we've been trying to solve these issues, and it just turns out that just, they just the levels weren't big enough. Plain and simple. Yeah, so, so basically there's there are these kind of balancing all, going all on in the background all the time. Because when you add something, something else is affected. So it's always a big challenge, like when you release new stuff, to make sure that the game is still balanced and fun and... Uh, difficult enough, you know. There's just so much that goes into it. <clears throat> my new, my new word to I use to try and not freak Angelica out is benign. <laughs> I'm doing this change. It's benign. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> you say that, but yeah. Yeah. I say that with a with a hint of hope. <laughs> So whenever Gordon breaks something, the bugs come through me. I'm the one who have to look at them and, and prioritize them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and try to like recreate them and yeah. Bugs. Yeah. But I mean it's it's gonna be impossible to make games without bugs. See look at this. Yeah. We have two two placements of walls on this. That won't happen anymore, oh, by the way. After a, when I, whenever the next update is, I I've fixed those because that drove me nuts. We got some floaters on the right side here. Ooh. Damn it. Oh my you know, it's also a very very good feeling to to look at all these things in here and be able to tell the people in the stream we're fixed that. <laughs> That's gonna be. <laughs> That's going to be better. Yes. I, I, lo I love being able to say that and not go like, ah, we're just going to have to accept it. I'm not sure. Oh, the floater is taking our people. That is not good. Yep, I lost two of them. Try to I'm curious. Them, but... I'm curious. Ha has anybody noticed anything different about the greed since Deadlands? Is there any changes that people have noticed? This is a challenge. Yeah, because I was like, wow, I'm glad you're not asking me because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're hurting my feelings, Angel. Sure. I spent very, three days, so three days, three days doing this doing to make what? it work. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see if anybody can answer. Anybody in the stream? Badger Smacker. You're the last one to write anything. 
Oh my god, they're gonna build a wall over here, I think, because I accidentally built a wall when they This is not gonna end well for anyone. Oh, but, oh, we just had a blood moon. No, it was a retaliation wave. Never mind. The fun thing about the lizard is he can only replenish in the sun. I got that that inspiration from Swedes <laughs> in the springtime. <laughs> oh darn it, this is not gonna work out at all. Um so yeah. Okay, how far away are you? Oh boy. Uh, oh boy. Too far away. Uh yeah, they're gonna take our workers as well. Oh no. That was the wall that I accidentally built when you tried to trick Oh my god! <laughs> this is not gonna uh when you tricked me into trying to drop gems and I built a wall on accident. That wall just messed everything up. Let's see if we can get back. Can you pay for some hammers if you have money? Because we need more builders because I I lost them. Okay. Done. Thank you. Let's see if we can fix this. Because now we have a wall, like, right on the other side of the island. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I feel like when I look at this? Uh, I love the, li the lizard, but the only thing it still bothers me is when he, when, and this is, I fig finally figured out. The ruler looks like they're riding on one of those rides at the supermarket that you put your kids on. Look at it. It's like, where's the coin slot? So I can, I guess we did pay coins for it, so. But it's like. Fair enough. <laughs> it it okay. just looks, uh, I don't know, something about it. I like how it looks. Wow. Well, uh, wait, 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 wait. I like it. Now I lost the spot where I was trying to build a wall. I don't know what I'm doing. <clears throat> no, but it was there, but to just we can just ignore it now that it's been knocked down. Oh, right. That's uh, actually very good. That was intentional. So basically, I'm going to try to chop <laughs> down these trees uh, yes. closer to the beggar camp so we can just add a wall. There's a wall right here at the front that we can add so we could nice space for the farm That's so we good. can get max farm yes. plots yes we don't have any farms do we okay no is this a spot where we'll be we're farm? not farmer friendly <laughs> no is this where, where we want to farm where i'm standing yeah I'm gonna make a farmer. There you go. I love that they have the little straw hats on. It's very fashionable. But Angelica, this is your last stream with me for a while. Yes, it is. I'm having a baby kind of soon. Yeah. So. Like soon, soon, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I it, it's like. Some days I think like, oh, wow, it's going to come tomorrow. <laughs> and other days I'm like, <laughs> it's probably going to be like a month. Um, but yeah, super pregnant. Um, Pandemic baby, are you going to put like COVID or Corona anywhere in one of the names? <laughs> no, <laughs> I was kind of worried like when I realized I was pregnant um, and I was like, oh, my God, it's a Corona baby. She's gonna get, <laughs> it's like the baby's gonna get bullied in school. And then I realized they're all gonna be Corona babies. Exactly. It's gonna be like a generation of Corona babies. But apparently there's a, like a huge baby boom. I don't know if it's in Sweden only, but when like the hospitals are full, when I try to like sign up, they're like, oh no, we don't have any space for you. We're full. Uh, Cause there's a lot of babies coming. So yeah. So much for that social distancing. 
<laughs> Maybe yeah. that's the problem. It's that you guys, are, everyone's just stuck together. <laughs> exactly. Like, there's not much else to do. Um, but yeah. Looking forward to it, but also it's it's like it's weird to not work for so long time. Just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're a bit of a workaholic, I'd say. <laughs> Just um, very passionate about the games that I'm involved in. It's, you know, so it's kind of sad to not be be like there for like patches and releases. I mean, I, get, I can play them, I guess I can always watch from the sidelines. Uh, but it's always really exciting to release like new content out to people. So I'm a little bummed about not being there for the upcoming stuff that's happening that's really cool. But yeah, can't really, can't say much more about it than that it's really cool. <clears throat> uh, gothic, oh, okay. I'm trying to read this name out loud. I'm so, out loud. I'm sorry for slaughtering it. Uh, Gothic Kids is asking. I, I get so go, sad. Go. It's like Game of Thrones. I, kid. Okay. I get so sad um. when my little dog is kidnapped by the greed. Is there any way to bring it back? There is. Um, if you go to the island where you lost it, you can rescue it from the cave. But you need to destroy the cave and get the bomb. So it's. It takes some effort, but that's that's the most important part that you do get the dog back because the dog is really sad. Yeah. Thank you. Or really happy dog. if you weren't a good owner. Uh -huh. Maybe the greed treat the dog better. Yeah, it's like what what do they do with the dog? Because it it can spend months inside of that cave and it's still like they're friends with the dog. I I yeah. imagine that they're like playing with the dog, giving him lots of treats. Mm-hmm. And then we come back and force him into our service again. Yeah, follow me. Bark at my command. <laughs> yes. Are there greed dogs? Oh my god. <laughs> no, but that's a good idea. Yeah, but I, I mean, the um, Hungry Spice mentions the crown stealer. That's definitely doggy. Oh, yeah. Like, maybe that's what happens to dogs that you don't rescue. They become crown they stealers. Turn into crown stealer. This is canon now, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. All the crown stealers are the forgotten dogs. That is so sad, Gordon. That is so <laughs> really sad. Breaks my heart. Wow. I love the setting sun. It is yeah, and, and this and and Deadlands, I I really like t took th these colors and and really went wild with them. So the colors in Deadlands are way way more uh, like fantastical, I would call it, than uh, than you see in the um, the other settings um, because this was this is kind of a more magical setting. So I I wanted to have kind of fun with the colors and. One thing is that it always stays dark, so your your characters always have torches out. And the torches also shows like when your ability recharges. So if I use my ability, the torch goes out and it takes a few seconds for it yeah. to come back on. I feel like we're just getting so many blood moons. What's yeah, going on? But is this like a regular one? Because we haven't destroyed anything in a yeah. while. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. We don't have a really steady source of income. Maybe we need to get that farm going. I built that wall and upgraded it to stone, by the way. Very good. Yes. We're actually nearing the end of the stream here, unfortunately. But, uh, I mean, just because I'm going on uh, maternity leave, that does not mean I'm going to leave you hanging, Gordon. Um, we have our a replacement for me, that's Elizabeth, and she'll take over the torch. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> well, are you? Are you really? No pun intended with that one. Uh, kind of, says, a little <laughs> pun intended. Um, but she's gonna uh, help out with the streams in the future, so we will be seeing more yep. streams. Um, uh, you guys say, will be yeah. stuck with me. 
Um, so you'll still have me, but uh, hopefully that's okay. Uh, well, but yeah, yeah so and, and we're gonna do one in the uh, beginning of next month. So yes, be prepared. We try to Put do it in one your calendar. every Wednesday, uh, first Wednesday every month. Yeah. Yep, yep. But you can always just follow the channel, and um, you get a little notification when it's going on. Uh, we can't. Uh, some. Uh, I think. Go. Yeah, I. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm gonna call it say go tick. Perfect. So go tick. <laughs> to answer your question uh, about swim ramp content, uh, we can't say, but there is stuff in the works. So I would say just, yeah, just wait and uh, and but it, don't hold your breath. But it 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 won't it won't be super long from now. Is my guess. And by the way, something I also fixed was if you look the the glow from the sun, somehow it got moved into the wrong Z axis. Uh, so it looks like it's in front of the stratus clouds in the back. And it's supposed to be behind those. So I actually fixed that. So that's another thing that'll be fixed in an update that we'll announce sometime. Who knows when? Do you think anybody other than sooner than later, but that? not not soon enough to hold your breath? <laughs> <laughs> Gordon, do you think anybody else than you actually did notice that the thing with the glow from the sun being in front of the clouds? I hope so. I hope everybody noticed and was super disappointed in me. Because <laughs> I had no idea that was a bug. <laughs> I mean, like, but like, I can understand that. I can understand that. It's like, you know, this isn't... You know, it's pixel art. It's kind of abstract. It's like what what's what's supposed to be like what, and I think yes. those kind of things. It's it's on the developer to be looking closely at everything, and it took me a while to find that. So it's not like it's something that was super obvious to me. And I'm looking in the developer's view. So there's a view called the scene view, which gives you like it shows you all the yeah the it it reveals the magic behind the curtain. Uh, so to speak. So it's like I, everything is actually in 3D, but Unity has a special camera setting that makes this look like it's 2D. So all the things that you see behind it are actually layered behind those so that it renders the pixels that are closest to the camera. Look, we got another blood moon. We're, <laughs> we're trapped in something. This is a bug. It's a feature, man. Um... <laughs> And speaking of like showing stuff behind the scenes, you did a stream on your private um, Twitch channel. Oh, yeah, the other people night weren't supposed you... to see that. <laughs> <laughs> what? But you you streamed it and you showed uh, kind of behind the scenes <laughs> stuff on how it looks when you work uh -huh. on Blender State. So if yeah. anybody is curious of how it looks when Gordon uh, is working in Unity on Kingdom, there is actually yeah. a stream site. Twitch.tv forward slash Gordon Van Dyke, one word. Exactly. Yeah, I did that. It was like an impromptu thing. I was just like, huh, I should just show this because people might find it kind of interesting. So, and I just did it for fun to see, to see what it was like. And I was working on the stuff anyways. So it was kind of boring to sit there by myself because, you know, working from home. And so I was like, ah. I'm going to I'm going to show this off. I'm going to show people what I'm doing. And the nice thing is when you're I was editing blenders. And so when you're editing in the blenders, which is the colors of the sky, how many clouds there are, the colors of the clouds, so how much stars are out, uh, the ambient color, all these things. Uh, when I start when I when I do that, I have the game running. So it was like perfect. It's a perfect uh, setup to stream because it's not changing a lot and I can show people kind of like how the game looks in the editor. And you're not uh, spoiling but I can, any but I, upcoming content. No, it doesn't spoil in any upcoming exactly. comment and content. And also I can get feedback. People were like, oh, this looks nice. Yeah, you should keep it this way. And, and so I was playing around with colors and, and got to get feedback from uh, some Kingdom fans. And to me, that that's, that's super awesome. It's like, it's an awesome thing to be able to, to have that. So, 
It was fun. Lots of fun for me. Good. So uh, I think we are about to call it a day. Uh, we've done good work. We sailed away to another island. Still no sign of the lost puppy. Uh, but, but we did get the, um, the upgraded um, technology. So we got iron technology, which is required for us to be able to proceed to actually attacking the caves and eventually get the dog back. Uh, we'll see if, if Elizabeth and you continue on the save file or if you will have other stuff to play in the upcoming streams. We'll see. But I'm going to I'm gonna keep a copy of this uh, forever knowing that you've lost a dog and I need to save it sooner or later. Oh my gosh, look at this. How do I solve this one? What do you do? I had so many coins. I'm so rich. <laughs> You can give some to me, cause I'm bored. <clears throat> I'm giving, um, I saw a funny mention on Reddit today. Uh, one of the players called, this, cause this is the banker where I'm standing on the top part of the screen. You can give him money, he'll put it in the, in the vault and it'll get, gain some interest over time. Uh, so it's, it's just, it's a banker, but the person was so upset and was like, there's a money, money goblin in the middle of my kingdom. <laughs> He's taking my money. It's so super upset about the money goblin. It's a very funny way to look at, uh, bankers as money goblins. Okay. Isn't that all bankers? I mean, that describes real life bankers. <laughs> I'm going to pause this now because otherwise we're never going to. Never gonna quit because it's so yeah. so much fun. Um, so yeah, if we have any last questions for Gordon, shoot them now or forever stay silent. Or you? Any questions for you or me? Yeah, maybe. I think uh, Angelica could contributes a lot with uh, the design and giving feedback and and helping me think about the ideas. Uh, and yeah, so there's even some future content coming out that that you played a big role in helping me shape, so. I think one of my favorite things that I got to be part of, like deciding how it works, is uh, Miriam's crystal whip, so that she actually yep. freezes the greed with the whip. That was like one of the first things I got to have input on. Um, and I can point to it and say like, wow, that was my idea. <laughs> and we did that. Um, so that's really cool to be able to be part of, because there is so many people involved and it's always hard to point at something and say like, hey, I did that. Uh, but that was my idea, and I'm really proud of it. I like it. <laughs> I, I love that we have the, that kind of team dynamic as well. It's always been super important to me. I've always seen designers not as the ones that come up with all the ideas and they implement only their thoughts. But to me, a designer is someone who works with the whole team and listens and f hears the ideas and goes, that totally works. And more it's like, in design, I feel like my responsibility is to really understand how all the elements of design work together and be able to quite quickly uh, hear an idea and, and think about how can that work, can that work, and put it through the process, uh, just, you know, thinking about it, and then if, and say, this is a, an amazing idea and helping make that idea into something that's a reality you know, that's the important we all work that's on what the game it, and we all know yeah. the game very well but we all have sort of different views so exactly like letting everybody have a say is it's a really cool way to make games yeah i think it's the right way and i, I feel like i mean i guess it's not, there's no right right way but i think for me and how I like to work. I feel like that is the right way. And I feel like the people that work together with us on this, they all feel like they they have a contribution and a voice beyond just this is your role and you're not allowed to do anything else outside of this. And I feel like it also speaks to the values of Raw Fury. And Raw Fury is very much a company around the idea that everybody has a voice and everybody, you know, you should be listening to everyone and taking that feedback but there is someone who has to be that decision maker uh so it, it's like and you know so it's up to that person to to make the final call but i think the the people that 
are doing the best job tend to be the ones that source lots of information from everyone and, and take that information and try and make the best choice, not the choice that only that they think of, but making making a decision that incorporates a lot of uh, feedback from everyone. Yeah, and I mean, there's, that's, there's, that's there's working, my hippie rant. Yeah, but I mean, working like that is what has brought Kingdom to the point where it is today. So yeah, obviously, it works I, very I, well I only can have so many ideas, <laughs> right? And it's like, and, and I'm everybody sure has it's a limitation. An resource, actually. <laughs> It'll never huh? stop. I'm pretty sure that's a no, it does. resource. I, mean, I have a lot of ideas, but it doesn't mean they're all good either. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. That's they're two different things. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. So we're going to sign off for today. I'm so glad for everybody who joined us and threw questions in the chat. And uh, yeah, thank you, uh, you very know, much. Keep your joining. eyes peeled. We are super excited to talk about what's coming for Kingdom. Uh, we can't talk about it just quite yet. We've probably been dropping some hints during the stream if you've been listening. Uh, but we are super excited to get to tell you more as soon as we can. Um, so, I mean, follow the Twitch channel. You can also find Kingdom the Game on social media. And we'll let you know as soon as we have more to say. Um, and Gordon, thank you for joining me today. Very fun. Uh, still upset about thank the you. dog, but we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to figure out. We'll have to remember who lost the dog. That was you. That was, I mean, I have this on video. That was you. You lost the dog. hundred <laughs> percent. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Take care, everyone. Um, I'll Bye, see everyone. You when I see you. Bye.